Hi everyone, I'm Kyle. I'm here at the State Library of North Carolina here to learn about some genealogy research. With me today is Beth. She's a reference librarian here and she's here to tell us a little bit more about the United States Census. Hi Beth. Hi Kyle. The census is a great place to start. Let's go look at some microfilm. So Beth, what is the census and why is it so important to genealogy research? The census is a count of people, and in our case, the United States population. And it is the backbone of genealogical research. It puts a person at a specific place in time. It also gives an approximate age of the person. It was originally taken by federal marshals who enumerated people based on local knowledge. This also coupled with the fact that there was no standard form allowed a lot of problems in this earliest census, and some of them were incomplete. Well, we're looking at the census here on microfilm. Uh, why aren't we looking at this online? When things are put online, they're transcribed, they're read from handwritten script, and a lot of mistakes can be made. It's always good to go back to the original source, and the microfilm is an excellent way to do that. What can you tell me about the history of the census? Well, there's a lot of important dates and facts about the census. One thing is, is that from 1790 up to 1840, only the heads of households were listed. 1870 was a significant census as well because it was the first time that former slaves were enumerated in the census. Um, also, in 1890, that census was burned and only a fragment of that remained, so that's really not searchable. I completed the 2010 census form. Why can't I find that information online? There is a 72-year rule mandated by law that protects the confidentiality of people. That means that in April of 2022, the 1950 census will be released. The latest census that has the names on it that you can search now will be in the 1940 census. What's the significance of the 1940 census? The 1940 census is very interesting in the, in the fact that it was the first time that a lot of people could research themselves. Also, you can see the effects of the Great Depression on a person's family. A lot of families were separated. A lot of times the husband would have to leave the house in order to go out into the world and find work. Families could be split up sometimes because there were too many mouths to feed, so a, a child might have gone to live with a relative or even a neighbor. Sometimes families even had to take in borders in order to make ends meet. And you can find that information sometimes in the 1940 census. How do I start my search when I want to access census information? A good place to start would be at your local public library or local history room or archives. Um, there you can often find subscription databases where you can do research on your relatives. Um, a lot of times these subscription databases will index the census and allow you to search every 10 years backwards. Start with yourself or your parents or your grandparents, whoever might be listed in the 1940 census, and just work back every 10 years from there. Not only do you want to check for names of your ancestors, but you also want to check for what we call the fan club, and that's family, associates, and neighbors. A lot of times if you check 10 families before your ancestors' family or the 10 after, you can find potential spouses, neighbors, and friends, and also get a sense of the community that your ancestor lived in. Okay, so did the Census Bureau only keep statistics on population? Absolutely not. As the census progressed, people saw the value in the information that they were gathering, and so they, there were some years where they started to conduct special censuses the agricultural census, the mortality census, the veteran schedules, and the slave schedules. Those are all very important censuses, and those, that's not even a complete list of them. Oh, there we go. Paul Cameron was a wealthy plantation owner. He owned property in both Orange and Person counties. 
Um, we can look at him on the agricultural census and look at the amount of crops that he had, mm -hmm. the amount of livestock and that sort of thing. This is the 1860 slave schedules. He was a very large landowner. I'd also like for you to look at the microfilm for 1870 for Person County. All of a sudden, there are numerous African Americans by the last name of Cameron. These were most likely former slaves. You can get a sense of how the Civil War might have impacted a farmer's life. Um, you could look at the agricultural census to get an idea of that. So this is the mortality schedule for Beaufort County. And here's some of the names of people who died within that census year, their age, their sex, their race, and how they died. There are things like congestion, flux, pneumonia, drowned, old age, diphtheria, fits, the 1840 census was the first one to ask about military service, but in 1890, after the Civil War, there was a special veteran schedule, and it is one of the few parts of the 1890 census that survived. And this census was conducted in order to find out how many pensioners there were and how many widows from the Civil War. It only included Union soldiers, so those who fought for the Confederacy are not included. However, you can sometimes see that they were accidentally listed and their names were, were marked out. What if I can't find my ancestor listed on the census? Well, there are a lot of reasons why you might not be able to find your ancestor listed. Um, mistakes were made. People were often suspicious of the federal government. They might have thought that the census was another way to levy taxes on them. Some areas were remote, even though it might be heavily populated now. Um, often the spellings of the names can differ from census to census. Remember that the census taker was only human and they just wrote down what they heard. And um, so there might even be inconsistencies with the spelling of a surname. Is there anything else I need to know? information can be found locally and you can exhaust those sources before going and looking at the original sources. Um, also be aware of that fan club, the family, associates, and neighbors. Um, they may have some potential information for you. Great, thanks so much Beth. Now you'll know a little bit more about the United States Census and how you can use it in your genealogy research. I encourage you to get started.